This is the full guitar tutorial of Mars Liverpool by John Squire and Liam Gallagher. I've tried to get as close to the track as possible and in this video I will break down every note and the theory behind it. Let's listen to the first solo and break down what's happening. I did get a question in the last video about signal flow, so let's just quickly go through that so you know what tones I'm using. So I'm just going for my trusty Fender Tone Master Deluxe Reverb, just on a clean sound. Then I'm going into a Golden Fleece Fuzz, into my Barbershop Overdrive, and then my Chorus. Now in the video I thought I had my delay on, but actually it turns out I didn't. Then I'm using my guitar volume to control the amount of fuzz and overdrive you are hearing. So if I want to go from a fuzz to a clean sound, all I need to do is just bring that volume back. So here's my full fuzz sound. The first part of the solo is just using G major pentatonic and we have this little triad shape, a G major triad where we're raking through. To do that I'm just pushing through the pick from the G string down. Then we go to the third fret of the G string, which goes into G minor pentatonic, first position. So the whole thing. Then the rhythm guitar goes to a C chord, and then John Squire shifts into a C major pentatonic shape. Then I'm hearing he sort of slides up to the tenth fret. I'm just going up with my first finger there. Then he plays the octave, which is the 12th fret of the G. And that time in there. One, two, three, and four. And next bar. So main challenge there, we've got our first thing on the 12th on the D, second thing on the 13th fret of the A, and we're using our third thing to hammer up to the 14th fret. And from there, and shift back. Next bar. Then we're going back to this position. A semitone bend on the fifth fret. Then we do a roll from the third fret of the high E to the B. And a roll is where we're just using one finger but trying to use the weight to go between the E string and rolling onto the B. So you don't get this barring sound. And then we roll onto the G. So it's just using that rolling motion of the finger. And then from the G string, hammer onto the fourth fret. That's a really typical blues lick. Third fret of the B. And we play then the fifth fret on the G. Land on our root note. Now this next bit is a bit that from other videos I've seen no one actually plays but it's definitely in there and it's really really cool. So what he does, plays the fifth fret of the D, then he sort of slides down to the three then the two, then he does this like really cool dyad lick. And then we can land on the E string, third fret. So let's hear the rhythm part and then let's break that down. First of all, the rhythm. I love that chord. So he's using some chocking. So that's chocking, if you don't already know, it's where we're muting the strings. So placing our fingers across the strings and we get this really cool percussive sound. Then that chord that you just heard there, I'm just barring my third finger across all the top four strings. And that gives us what we call a G6 slash nine. Rhythm broken down. One, two, choc, and okay, so one, two, three, and so on three we chock. Then we then do another upstroke on the and the beat four on the G6 slash nine. One, two, three, and four. And two, three, and four. So that's chock and three and four. 
Then we go to a C major, and this time it's a very similar rhythm. But we then go back to our G chord. One, two, three, and four. Two, three, and four. Then we go to a B minor, then to an E minor. So the rhythm is the same from B minor to E minor. Then we go to C major, and the rhythm for this slightly changes. No chocking, we just go one, two, Bass note on one, strum on two, nothing on three, and then and four. Then we go to this D chord, which we do this really cool descending line. So first D5, one and two, change in the and. Back to the A string on the end of two, three, beat three on the third fret, and four. One and two and and four and and two and three and four. Now we move on to verse two. is exactly the same apart from we've got a different ending. Rather than going to this that D part that we just looked at, we go to this A over C sharp. So A major with C sharp in the bass, which is a really cool sound because it's uh, we're kind of getting ready for the, the actual chorus part which changes key. So this is all in the key of G major. G, C and D. When we go to the chorus it changes to the key of D. D, G and A you'll hear that in a second. So it's really cool little gateway because we're going from a C, then we're going to a C sharp, then we go to a D. And that's where we get this really natural sort of transition going to a new key. On that change, we've got an A over C sharp, third finger, fourth fret, then we're playing a first finger bar across the two on the D and two on the G. Then our pinky finger is then playing the fifth fret of the B. So the strumming pattern for that first bar we have one, two, three, and four, and. Then our pinky finger comes off, second finger goes onto the third fret of the B, then we go and two and three, then we take our second finger off, and four and. So it's one, two, three, and four, and, and two, and three, and four, and. Then we go to the chorus. It's definitely got that Mersey Paradise Here Comes the Sun vibe. So what we have uh, chord wise we have D major to D7, then to a G, then to an A. And this is all coming out of that D major key, D, G and A in it. So what we have, we've got D major, then E, then B, then we take the second finger off, and then second finger back on. Then pinky finger comes up onto the third fret of the high E then open high E, then back up to the second fret. Now that note there I just played the second fret was the note that one of my subscribers mentioned. I was playing the third fret of the B on the video, so I do apologize after hearing it, it's definitely the second fret of the high E, so well done to my subscriber, got a better ear than me. Then from there we go to a D7. Similar picking with the right hand. So here you've got the strum, then E, then B. And again, the same sort of melody, open then two. Then pinky finger on the third fret. And again, on the video, I'm playing the third fret of the B, but I think he just ends up hearing, or ends up playing, sorry, that open high E string on its own, so. Then we go to a G. G5, E string, and strum top three. Then first finger gets involved, second fret of the high E, 
and pinky finger on the third fret. Then we do a run down from the high E string, three, two, open, and then third fret of the B. Then we go to the A chord, and again, this is what I've seen in other tutorials and playthroughs. No one does it like this, and I'm 99% sure this is how John is playing it. So we play an open A, and then I'm just using my first finger to bar the, the triad there, the D, G, and B on the second fret. And I'm using my third finger to then hammer on to the B string third fret. So I strum and then hammer on. Then take off to hit the B string again. Then I'm hearing A7 where I take my first finger off and I'm just trying to strum the D and G strings together. So that's one, two, three, and four, and... From there we're going to A sus4, so barring the D and G third finger back on. So... Then we go back to our D chord. D7. Then it goes E minor, then to an A. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Then we're doing that picking pattern from that D chord. Then that takes us to solo number two. So this one's really short, it's only four bars long, and we're playing over G, two bars, C for one bar, G for one bar, back to the key of G now. Using major and minor pentatonics together. Um, so really good to get your minor and major pentatonics down, and you'll be able to sort of really visualize what's going on here. But uh, first of all, he starts off in the uh, G string on beat two on the third fret. Hammers on to the fourth fret. Again, we've seen that on the first solo. Then we do a third fret on the high E, then a roll to the third fret of the B. One, two, and then does this. So B string, three up to six. And then third fret back to six. One, two. Then sixth fret of the high E. Little blues bend here. So don't already know what a blues bend is, it's where we're playing a note. And just before the end of the note duration, we want to uh, just sort of bend the note slightly sharp. Don't want to bend it early, too quickly, because it sounds like it's out of tune. We just bend it last moment. So there we go in six, and then back to the three with that little bend. And that's the sound we're after. Then we're taking our position up to a G minor pentatonic up here, the 10th fret and the 11th fret, and this is playing out of shape four. And then we're hearing that blues bend again, but this time on the B string, 11th fret, it's the same. This time he's playing the 10th fret of the high E. This one we don't bend, we don't bend the index finger, we just bend the second. Then we're resolving that lick by playing the G string 12th fret. All together, one. So after that, we then go to verse three, which is exactly the same as our previous verse. And then we play another chorus again, which is exactly the same. Then we go into solo number three. Solo number three is playing over this progression. Which is just on repeat. So let's look at the first phrase of that solo. So we're kind of playing out of the D minor pentatonic position now, around here. So we start actually starting the blues bend on the 13th fret. There, the 10th fret, then roll on to the 10th fret of the B. And 12th fret of the G, slide up, 
14th fret, and then 13th fret. And then. So that's the 12th fret, slide up to the 14th fret, which isn't a minor pentatonic note, that's actually the second degree or the ninth. So you might be thinking, okay, what's that then? That's probably out of the mixolydian mode, because after that we then play the 13th fret, which is the flat seventh. So I think more mixolydian than anything else here now. We then re-pick the 14th fret, slide down to the 12th, pinky finger, 12th fret on that B, and then we've got this really wild vibrato on the 10th fret of the G string, kind of going back to our minor pentatonic. So that's our flat third. And then finish that phrase off, we've got this. So just a bend, then bend again, let it back down, pull off to the 10, and 12th fret D. So the next part's really cool, it's got a really cool rhythm and it's just using these dyads. The rhythm without any notes sounds like this. Next, let's look at the dyads. So we've got 13th and 14th fret together. Do 12s, then 11 and 10, 9 and 8, and then 7s. And then adding the rhythm, you have this. And the vibrato is quite wild, it's not particularly um, consistent, so I think just go for it. Um, it doesn't really matter too much, it's more of a feel thing. You know, it's not consistent as in the speed and the, the, the direction of how much he's moving up and down by. And just to finish that solo, we have this phrase. So we re-pick that ninth fret that's bent up to 11th, re-pick, let back down, and to the 7th, So that was a pull off there, nine seven. Pull off. Then. So seven, nine, seven, bend, roll. Then we go to the 10th fret of the B. And just run down uh, the scale. So 10, seven, nine, seven. And then we do a little pull off, nine, seven, to finish off on beat one. So that last pull off is actually beat one of the chorus. So what I'll do is I'll just hold that seventh fret and then join when I can to the actual chorus line. So it'd be more like. Okay, then it goes into our final chorus, which is the same part from we've just got a double uh, D section. goes into solo number four. After reading an interview with John Squire in the Guitarist magazine, does sound like in the studio there was a few pedals lying around as well and I think he was using a Univibe pedal for this because you can really hear it sort of kick in. I didn't actually use one in the recording because I haven't got one but if you have um, use it for this solo only. So it starts on the 10th fret on the D which is actually more of a minor pencil on it but it goes more into the mixed lithium flavour in a second but so the starting point is here then it goes into this mixed lithium sound. So that first part, the 10th fret of the G to the 12th fret of the D. Then we're seeing this minor third to major third lick again. Right into key of D. And the 10th fret. That's really cool, I love that. So you're going 10, no, flat third up to major third. 
then to the fifth degree, and then we're playing the fourth, third, fourth, third. Then from there. Then you go 10 up to 12. Then we change position. Similar sound for what we did in the first solo, but this time we're borrowing the 12th fret of the A and D and hammering up to the 14th fret. And then from the 14th fret, slides up to the 17th. And then plays the 15th fret of the D. And this is where it starts to fade out. I'm not sure how John's gonna actually play this live. I'm guessing he will just improvise. I think it will just go on many more minutes, uh, I'm guessing, but we'll see. So uh, looking forward to that. So 13th fret of the high E, two bends and then 10th fret. So then with G string we bend the 12th fret up a tone. And then we play the 10th fret of the B, then we bend again. And then back to the 12th, so. And then the last little phrase, 10, 12, 10. So that's G, D, G, and we bend. Then the 10th fret of the B. And then finally, we finish on the 13th fret, bend up. So I hope you've enjoyed the breakdown of Mars Liverpool. If you want to support my channel, please go and check out my Patreon site where you'll find tabs for this and many other tracks. And this is the full tabs on screen video of Mars Liverpool. So go and click on that right now and I'll see you over there.